Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to discuss how can we code in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I'm going to explain the installation and setup and then we'll talk about Python interactive shell. After that, we will discuss how IDEs are used for Python. And finally, I will explain how you can write your first Python code. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And if you're looking for a certification program, check the link in the description box. Also tell us in the comments section guys, how you found Python. If you're a beginner, what kind of problems are you facing beginning with Python? And if you have already started with Python, tell us in the comments, what kind of projects are you working on? Do you need any assistance with those projects? Or is there anything in specific that you want us to cover? Please do tell us your ordeals and we will help you to learn and understand Python correctly. So moving on, let's take a look at the first topic of our session guys, which is installation and setup. So as a beginner, the very first thing that you have to do while, you know, starting with Python programming language, apart from reading about what exactly is Python, moving past that phase, you're going to have to install and set up Python on your system guys. Basic instruction would be Python is an interpreted language. It is open source. It has a lot of libraries. It is easy to learn and the readability is pretty great. The syntax is easy. It's like reading or writing a code in simple English language, but installation and setup is still the orthodox one. You have to download a file from the official documentation, of course, and after that you'll have to install it using the setup. It actually requires a few things that you must be aware of, like how you can set a path manually or you get that option to set the path in the setup as well. First thing that you have to do as a beginner, as anyone who has professional knowledge about programming as well, you have to know what kind of system you are using, what is the operating system you are using. It could be a Windows operating system, it could be a Mac OS or a Linux as well. So you have to know which version you have to download and then after that, you'll have to know what kind of Python version you are going to use. Is it going to be Python 2, Python 3? And if you're using Python 3, what kind of version you are looking for, 3.5? 3.6, 7, 8 or Python 9 as well because uh, the latest version that has been released in the market is Python 3.9. So we're going to have to consider the versions that we're going to use for our particular, you know, the operating system that we are using. To start with Python programming, you'll have to go to the python.org where you will have a download section. They'll be given a lot of packages or releases that you can, you know, begin with. So since I'm using a Windows operating system, I'll be looking at the Python releases for Windows. If you have Mac OS, you can look for the Mac OS and then subsequently if you can look for Linux as well or any other operating system that you're using. All right, so latest Python 3 release is Python 3.9.0 and latest Python 2 release is Python 2.7.18. So whichever Python release that you want, you can download it from here. And after that, you're gonna have to take a look at you know, all the downloadable files. So there is an embeddable zip file executable installer is there, which is for the 64 bit web based installer is there 64 bit executable installer is there. So you're going to have to download this one if you want to install Python on your system. Since I've already done that, I'm not going to run the setup again, but I'll show you how it looks like. All right, guys. So this is what the setup looks like since I've already installed it. I'm using 3.7 and this is the version for 3.8.6. So I'm not going to do it. And while you are installing or this setup opens up, there is a checkbox here which says add Python 3.8 to path. So always, uh, you know, remember to check this. If you don't do that, you're going to have to set the path manually. Don't worry guys, even if you actually miss this particular function over here, because we already have a tutorial on how we can set path manually on Python. Yes, if you have missed out that part, you can check it out on our YouTube channel and you'll be good to go guys. So right now I've told you about all the releases, you know, the versions that you can download from. After the setup is done and you have installed Python, what you will have to do is you're going to have to open command prompt and just type Python. Now, if everything went perfectly well and your path is also set perfectly, if you run this command on your command prompt, you will get somewhat like this. The output would look somewhat like this, which says Python 3.7.8, which is the version of the Python version that is installed on this system. Yes, and we have actually entered the Python interactive shell. So we're going to talk about this in a while. But before this, okay. So now I want to, you know, stress upon this fact. If you have not set the path properly, 
you're going to have to do it manually. Otherwise, you will face a lot of errors. So make sure you check that particular function that I told you in the setup. Or if you have to, you know, if you face any errors uh, later on and if you have to set the path manually, you can go on and check out that uh, tutorial that I told you about, you know, how to set path manually on our YouTube channel. So I'll just minimize this for now. Now, as you install Python, there is one thing that comes with it, which is idle. It's basically an IDE for Python that it comes with, uh, you know, the installation. So we'll be talking about that as well. And there are several other IDs you know, like JetBrains has uh, come up with PyCharm. Then you can use VS Code Editor. There is Sublime Text, Jupyter, which is from Anaconda. So there are a lot of options that you can explore. But initially, as a beginner, I would suggest you to start with Idle. And once you get the hang of it, you can start out with other IDs as well. So Python is very easy to learn that you guys already know. It is one of the reasons because it has a very good documentation which comes to the beginner guide and there is a developer's guide as well. But since you are starting out with Python, you're going to have to take a look at some examples. You know, the basic concepts like how variables works in Python, what are the data structures like in Python, how the syntax is for each and every, you know, module that you're going to use or how you declare classes, how the functions work. The function calls and everything and since everything is you know treated as an object in python what exactly is a class since class is also an object it is going to be an instance of a bigger class as well so that there comes the meta class and there are a lot of you know concepts that you're going to be learning about when starting with python and i would suggest you to you know follow a structured learning path where you first you learn about the pure python you know concepts and only after that you move on to the fancy stuff where you can just import a library for data analysis or for data science um, concepts like visualization or move on to you know advanced concepts like machine learning or deep learning so moving back to our topic we are going to talk about the interactive shell guys so as soon as i write python over here i'm in the shell and since python is an interpreted language python shell plays a very important part here since it can actually execute one line at a time so the very first thing that you will learn in Python as a beginner is of course hello world because this is like a universal remedy for learning a programming language if you don't know how to print hello world uh, you have missed out on a very major part of programming language now if I execute this command so I am getting the string as hello world so since we have not discussed data type set and I'm not really going to you know go deeper into this so in this part of the session I'm just telling about the Python interactive session I can write my code here. Now I've exited the Python shell. So we'll just close the command prompt for now. So we know that we have already installed Python on our system. And we have also seen how a Python interactive shell works. We can, you know, execute commands one by one over there. And it's helpful when we are, you know, just executing a few commands. But other than that, we are going to use a editor, text editor, where we can actually write the code. So that's going to be helpful. So for that, for you know writing the full script full python script we will discuss the python ide so what exactly is ide guys all right so guys when it comes to uh, programming uh, an ide is a no brainer it's basically an environment that is provided to us for building applications after installing python from python.org it comes with an integrated development environment called idle so we have opened idle guys so if you open idle it will open the python shell first of all so like we have seen in the command prompt as well. So let's write a few commands. Hello world, let's say. Again. So we're getting the value hello world. Now we are going to stick to very basic data structures to make you understand how you can write your first program, guys. Now I discussed like this is going to execute one line at a time. So we're going to need something, you know, like an editor, a text editor, which will help us write different Python scripts. So for that purpose, we can make a new file. So this is my new file where I can write my Python script. The thing with idle is it's not as great as PyCharm, but uh, since you are beginning to learn Python, it will help you understand how indents, indents work in Python, you know, the spacing and everything. If you make a single mistake, you will have to identify it and correct it with a proper syntax. So that helps a lot, guys. Before moving on, let me just discuss how we should approach writing Python code, guys. Now, whenever you're writing a Python code, there has to be a structure into how you're going to approach it. So the very first thing that you would want to do is identify the problem statement first of all, because at the end of the day, the program or the script or code that you're writing is going to execute and perform a task. 
So you have to understand what kind of problem statement you have been given. So let's say I want you to just put 10 numbers inside a data structure. So I want you to do that. That is your task. So with Python, what you have to do is identify how you're going to approach it. So when I say you have to put 10 numbers inside a data structure, first you have to understand what kind of data structure you're going to use and how you're going to put those 10 numbers, which format will you use? Will it be an integer format or will you, you know, store them in a float format or in strings format? So these are the things how you should approach it. And this is a very simple example. Let's say a more complex example would be I want you to calculate the factorial of a number. Now there's one thing you have to understand here to calculate the factorial of a number. You're going to have to keep multiplying the number until your result is reached. So how are you going to do that when you write a single piece of code? So for that you're going to have to explore another concept which is iteration. Keep executing the same piece of code again and again until certain point is reached in your program. So this is the approach you should follow and this is for a very basic thing like I'm, I'm explaining how you can just get a list of numbers and how you can calculate the factorial of a number. These kind of problems or writing code in such format will help you build logic around uh, you know Python and whenever anybody asks you to execute any piece of code or write any code for any specific task, you'll be able to do it very efficiently and without the help of anybody else. So now we move on to our text editor. Now since we haven't discussed any data types or how it's done, I'm just going to you know just take one variable, let's say a and I'm going to store a few values here. This is my data structure, which is list right now. It's an empty list because I do not have given or assigned any values here. So what I can do here instead of just using an empty list is use a list constructor. You'll be able to learn this better when you have already you know been through data structures or data types in Python and we have a tutorial for data types as well. I mean list uh, tuple dictionary and set are you know the basic data types in Python. There are advanced data structures as well th that we have in collections module. So you'll be able to learn them better when you move on from one step from the beginners level. This is a list constructor. It's going to give me an empty list right now. But what I will do is I will get another data type, which is the range data type. It basically gives me numbers from whatever range I specify. So I'm going to put the range as 0 to 11 because we want 10 numbers in our list and I will give the step as one. This is a very basic example guys and I'm going to print a over here. So this is my Python script to perform a specific task that I was talking about guys. Right, so I'll just run this. Save it. All right, let's just save it as test. And now I have completed the task with my Python script. So I've got 10 numbers inside a data type. So that is one task that we were given. Okay, so let's just perform another task guys. So let's say the next task is I have a number and I have to you know decide if it's less than 10 if it's greater than 10 or if it is equal to 10. So right now how I would approach this particular problem is I have a number that a user is giving. Right now the program will decide if it is less than 10 greater than 10 or equal to 10. So this is my problem guys. We, we can add something else to it, but uh, it's going to follow a very simple approach. So let's say I have a number and this is an input. Okay, enter a number. We're going to be transparent here. So no need to be, you know, discreet about this. We're just checking the flow of the program. So now I have a condition. So I'm going to use the if else if and else. So if number is equal to 10, we will print equal yes else if number is greater than 10 we will print greater and if else number is less than 10 we are going to print less than and we will give you know default else statement as Let's say unknown value. So right now I do not know how this program actually works. So I'm just going to run it and see. So I have three conditions, right? So first of all, let me just write 10. 
so if it's equal to 10 it's give me the answer as equal now let's uh, run it again now if i provide a number greater than 10 it should give me the value as greater all right now i'm going to run this again so if the value is equal to let's say 5 it's giving me the answer as less than so our program here right now is perfectly fine so if i give it some value right it's giving me an error which says invalid literal for int with base 10 you see right because we cannot just specify any number over here so what i have to do over here is let's just say we give it a value as a string now we have not given any condition for a string so what will happen is it will give us the value as unknown value it's actually a type error guys because greater than is not supported between instances of string and int all right how we get the type errors and the different data types is something that you will understand so right now i just wanted to make it a little complex so that's why i was using you know different data types just to see how a different value would work here so yes guys we have successfully created a program to check if a number is greater lesser or equal to 10. So this is how we create programs guys and this is your first program that you have created and with this we have come to the end of the session guys and if you have any questions you can mention them in the comment section below and if you are new here don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press that bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. If you are looking for a certification program we have given a certification link in the description box below go and check it out guys. Also tell us in the comment section guys what kind of problems did you face while starting out with Python programming language and how did you come up with solutions also if you are working on a new project or you, if you want to work on a new project tell us in the comment section guys how we can help you begin with that or if we can you know make a tutorial for it as well all right so i'll take a leave see you in the next session guys thank you and have a nice day i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!